bright neon colors, a downtown sunset, palm trees and a long driveway on a retro car. An aesthetic or a genre full of 80s retro nostalgia and popularly called Retrowave. You might also like to call it Synthwave or Outrun but if you are a fan of the theme then you will love today's video. Because today I will show you how to create a beautiful retro wave styled wallpaper with free stock images. Be sure to stick till the end as we will go over various topics like color grading, composition guides, motion blurs, light trails and all cool stuff. Alright without further delay let's dive into it and let's create. Everything starts with this beautiful render of a DeLorean. I am an all time fan of the retro wave theme and have wanted to create an artwork for quite some time now but it all needed a spark like this perfect image. I downloaded this for free from Adobe Stock, you can find links to all stock images used in the description below. I used Photoshop subject selection to get a quick selection to start with and then pressed Q to get into the quick mask mode. Here I could brush with black and white like you would do in a normal mask to refine the selection. Once done, you would just need to press Q again to get back to the selection mode and then use it to create the layer mask. I use my pen tablet and a manual painting method on the mask as it gives me finer control. But if you don't have a pen tablet, you can use the pen tool or anything else that you are comfortable with. Once the selection was done, I went into the smart object containing the car and removed the bright neon light tubes as I had a different plan with the lighting. I used a soft front brush and sampled nearby colors pressing alter option on the keyboard and simply painted over them. The DeLorean 3D render is modeled after the Back to the Future time machine but I simplified some areas to make it gel well with my composition. By the way, the cool retro wave music you hear in the background is from Envato Elements. If you are a fan of the theme or need them for your project or videos, you can check them out using my link in the description section. I dropped the road image and used the flow grid from the car image to use it as a guide. Since my road is slightly curved, I didn't work on fitting it exactly with the grid but the whole idea is to make everything converge at a point so that it creates a natural guiding lines for the eyes. And I will put the city and the sunset over at the converging point. I used the combination of the pen tool and manual brushing for the selection process. I used the free transform warp to further bend and align the road to the perspective. I added a paste sky image and then dropped another sky image in soft light blending mode on top of it. To make the clouds from the second image stand out, I used curves and darkened it up by dragging the RGB channel down. I like the clouds from the second image and they also create that sense of guiding lines to the converging point. Moreover, when I would add a motion blur to the scene, these clouds would look cool. For the city image, I used Photoshop's sky selection to create a selection around the sky and then inverted the selection to get a selection of the city skyline. Fine tuned any imperfections painting manually in the quick mask mode. I specifically chose this sun as it had some dark cloud stripes which can roughly simulate the striped retro wave sun. I dropped a mountain image and again used a sky selection and then inverted the selection to select the mountains. Then used several copies of it to fill up the composition. For selecting this palm tree, I used subject selection to get a rough selection, then went into select and mask and used the refine hair tool to create a selection around the leaves. Yes, apart from selecting the hair, the refine hair can work wonders in selecting leaves. I did the same thing for this image as well. I selected palm trees with a windswept look, hoping they would make the image more dynamic.
For this image, since the trees were almost in a white background, I went to color range and selected the white pixels and added an inverted mask. I also used levels to create a better contrast on the mask, resulting in a crisper selection. The selection of the aeroplane was similar as the car. Photoshop subject selection and then manual fine tuning in the quick mask mode. Here also the aeroplane sits on the guiding lines that will help guide the viewer's eyes to the focus of the composition. Compositions that have well established guiding lines to direct the eyes of the viewers are generally found to be more pleasing. I have actually implemented quite a number of elements for that purpose. With that done, let's start with the color grading. First I desaturated the car using a hue saturation adjustment layer. Then I took another hue saturation adjustment layer and went into its science channel and shifted the hue slider so that the tail lights become red. I extend the range of the color from the slider to make the shift a bit softer. Then fill the layer mask with black and reveal it only in the tail light areas. Next I used a dark blue color and painted some contact shadows and cast shadow on the road using a layer in multiply blend mode. Well, shadows are generally not black and always have the ambient light bleeding into them. So here I use a dark blue violet ambient light color from the sky as the color of the shadow. On the road, I clipped a curves adjustment layer, dragged the RGB channel down to darken it up, then lifted the blue channel in the shadow areas and dropped the green channels in the highlight areas down to create a blue magenta mix resulting in a violet shade. For the sky, I clipped a similar curves adjustment layer and here in the RGB channel, I reduced the highlights but lifted the blacks to lessen the contrast. Then did a similar blue and green channel modification like the road creating a violet color cast. For the sun, I lifted the RGB channel in the blacks and shadows to wash off the dark areas. Then dropped the blues and lifted the red channels to create a bright orange yellow color cast. I kept adding similar curves treatments on the other elements. The main objective is to darken them up by dropping the RGB channel and then add a violet color cast using a combination of lifted blues and dropped green channels. You can use any other adjustment layers that you want but I love working with the curves as it has a larger range and with it you can control both the exposure and the color values. By the way, while color grading I am also paying attention to work on the atmospheric perspective or depth using the aerial haze. I'm just lifting the channels in the shadow regions to further fade them and the effect is stronger on the objects further away. If you want to learn more about creating depth using atmospheric perspective and haze, be sure to check out my in-depth video on the topic. The link is in the description section and I think you will find it helpful. With that done, I added some overall color grading. I added a crisp warm color lookup table and changed its blending mode to color. And then added a Filmstock 50 color lookup table again in color blending mode and reduced its opacity a bit. On top of it, I added a curves it boosted highlights, darkened shadows and lifted blacks. Added another darkened up curves on top of it but masked it only on the top areas for a vignette effect. Added another curve with a slightly boosted contrast and a warmer tone and masked it around the sunset area. I thought making the interior of the car glow would look cool. For that, I painted the window pane areas with a soft peach orange color on a layer in light and blending mode. Then added some hue saturation adjustment layer and shifted parts to make it look like a pink peach gradient. Then I took a photo of a city at night, added hue saturation colorize to change the color of the lights to cyan and changed its blending mode to color dodge. This will be used to add city lights on the distant buildings. 
I made multiple copies and added a vertical motion blur on some of them, masked off unnecessary areas and adjusted the opacities as required. I painted some additional haze and bloom on the mountains, the city and at the end of the road. Here I tried to add some more white markings on the road sampling parts from a separate image. Ok, I hit the car, the aeroplane and the color grading layers and took a snapshot of the background only as I would be applying a motion blur. For that I used the blur gallery path blur. I kept adding path blurs matching the linear perspective of the composition. I almost reduced the blur at the vanishing point which is around the sunset. Well, since the camera is moving with the car following the same linear perspective, the background blur will be strongest near the car and it will blur less towards the vanishing point in that same linear perspective. I also masked the path blur effect around the sunset to further reduce this effect. Ok, here I realize that the cloud stripe like areas on the sun show the color of the sky of the image I used. So here it should show the sky that I have created. So I carefully masked off some of those areas. Then I took several layers in soft light blending mode and dabbed some ambient bloom effects. I added a pastel yellow around the sunset, a washed out violet around the right side for some additional contrast and some orangey peach color around the mid section to get some nice bloom on the car. For the highlights, I took a layer in linear dodge blending mode and painted some rim lights with a dark yellow color. I also used a copy of the same layer to add some shine to the metallic corners. I brushed some smoky color behind the car for a better separation from the background. Then I went into the blur gallery spin blur and added some spin motion on the wheels. I created a snapshot of the car with the effects and added a path blur and masked it only at the trailing areas to add a motion blur effect. The idea is that the camera might not be tracking the car at the exact same speed so there can appear some blur trails on the car as well. But then again, I don't want to overdo it and ruin it. I added some highlights, bloom and blur on the aeroplane using a similar approach. Then I painted some jet streams. These jet streams will also add up to the guiding lines that I was mentioning previously. Now it's the time to add the light trails. Generally retrowave artworks have a grid, but since I am sticking to a more real world scenario, I felt the light trails from other cars would be a nice replacement. For this I used a derivative of a grid technique by Max Asabin. You can go to his channel Asabin Art for details, but in a nutshell I added a gradient map with the darkest node being black and gradually added lighter shades of the color of the light that I wanted to add. Then created a solid black layer beneath it and clipped the gradient map on top of that black layer and changed the black layer's blending mode to screen. Now if I painted something with white on any layer in between these two sandwiched layers, the gradient map will react and show the colors based on the intensity of the white color added. I took a similar approach for the blue light trails. Finally, I took a snapshot of everything and added a slight camera raw filter. You know, I generally don't use camera raw as I go back and forth and taking snapshots every time is very cumbersome. But here the results were good. I also use the same to add the grain effect. You can expand the grain as well to control some advanced features of the grain. Next I added a lens correction filter to introduce a slight chromatic aberration. 
I did some minor modifications off screen and here goes the final result. I also created a green version, just I felt it looks nice and different. Anyways, if you liked the artwork and found it helpful, be sure to like the video and share it with your friends. And if you like my overall content, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel as that will greatly motivate me to create more videos like this. Well then, I will see you in the next video and till then, enjoy creating.